Hi, I'm Rob Dom, and with me is Michael Warholic. He's the technology manager for light duty vehicles here at Valvoline. It's cool to have, for Valvoline to have me here. It's even cooler for me to have Valvoline here. I can ask all the questions I can't get kicked out. So, <laughs> so you were mentioning that there's differences between low speed and high speed things. And, and on, oddly enough, there's one of the flaws with the rotary engine is this right here. You see the front bearing wears here. And, and it's actually because and there's a front pulley on here and it, the alternator and all the other things all pull the whole engine to one side. And so I, I was going to ask you that, that, am I correct in saying that that's more of like a low speed wear? So there, so there are so many different types of wear mechanisms and, and different types of lubrication regimes where different phenomena occur. So depending on the, the pressure, oil pressure in that location, the temperature in that location, the force. And I know when you drive, a lot of force, right? <laughs> and also, it also depends on how well the, uh, the parts are actually fabricated. So the tolerances between, say, the bearings um, and the crankshaft or the bearings and the camshaft, wherever the bearings are, are located, right. that clearance is incredibly important. And then you balance that with the viscosity of the oil, which varies with temperature. So if you're really revving things up and really yeah. cranking that temperature up, then that oil's gonna thin out, those parts will get closer together. Gotcha. And then if you have flex in that, in that rod, yep. you can get flexion one way or the other, and it could wear on one side versus the other side. I don't know if you're seeing, if you're seeing differences in wear around the perimeter of, of that more than anywhere else, but, but most likely you're seeing a lot of that wear probably at startup, yes. where the oil, oil parts are, I mean the engine parts are very close together, and, and they're rubbing. As you, as you uh, increase speed, that hydro, we call it hydrodynamic regime comes into play, the viscosity of the oil, okay. and those parts will separate. Depending on the viscosity you're using, what viscosity oil are you uh, using I right use now? I use VR1 2050. 2050, so that's yep. a nice heavy oil, right? Yes. So that heavy oil is gonna push those metal pieces apart further than say a 1030 or a 530. Okay. Now it, it is a heavier oil, so it's a higher viscosity, so you'll probably lose a little more energy there, yeah. So you want to maximize that, but you also need protection. Yes. So you have, you have to balance those two pieces. And that brings me to the next issue is, uh, being that my engines are so unique, is there generally a recommended operating temperature to get up to before you start thrashing on your engine? So yeah, your, your engines are unique. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not different. an expert in your yeah. engine, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you, you know a lot more. But what I will say is that temperature and viscosity go hand in hand. Okay. So when you ask that question, it really matters where you are in the engine too. So that, in terms of the speed of those metal parts versus each other, yes, um, and the temperature of the oil in those locations is going to change the viscosity and the performance of those different different gotcha. parts. Gotcha. And so, in a rotary engine, depending on where you're looking at the bearings or you're looking inside, um, it matters what the condition what the conditions are. That's why it's so hard to balance in just one oil. Right. You wish right. you could have like 20 oils in an engine, but that's just, um, we haven't invented that yet. But maybe someday. <laughs> in a rotary engine, uh, I, I, it's, again, this isn't, this isn't based on so much fact as much as hearsay, is that people talk about bearing clearances. And am I correct in saying that, uh, you know, a wider clearance would, be, would result in lower pressure if all things held the same? Yes, so uh, the distance between the metal parts, so the tolerances between there, dictates the pressure drop of a fluid, right? Okay. So, so the, the, the smaller the clearance is, the harder it is to push a fluid through a small channel. So if you ever drank a soda through a straw, it's pretty easy, right? But you try to drink a milkshake through the same skinny straw, it's harder to do, right? It takes uh, more, okay, more energy. Yeah. So, you, so, you, so that the closer you get uh, in tolerances for the bearing, so you may have to go to a thinner oil to be able to get the oil into those channels. I and the see. one thing that I, that, that I, and even I forget sometimes, is that the oil, one of the important things it does is take away heat. So you have to have a good flow rate of oil in those channels oh, or the wow. heat will stay there. Yeah. And if the heat stays there, you're gonna cook it. Just like you would cook in an oven, you know, olive oil would burn in an oven, it's gonna yeah. sit there and cook. You have to get it out and get it to cool down. So you have to have that circulation. And so matching the viscosity to those clearances, no matter where it is in the engine, is incredibly important. And the pressure of, you know, it depends on what kind of oil pump you have, but the pressure of that oil pump generates is dictated by those, those clearances. That makes sense. Uh, it's neat that as much as I uh, preach the goodness of VR1, it's also something I had heard before I got really heavy into this. Why, 
Why would somebody uh, with a performance engine use VR1? Yeah, so, so, so VR1 is our racing oil. Right. The key things we focus on with VR1, and I think, are you using the synthetic or the conventional? Uh, I actually use both. I use the synthetic in my race race car, the four rotor, and yep. then I use the conventional, which I have been for the longest time on my three rotor. So both use very similar formulations. The critical piece that we focus on there is wear. Because in, in race engines, as you know, because of the high speeds, because of the, of the, uh, the higher temperatures, wear becomes, becomes an issue and friction. And you want to minimize that friction. Yeah. So friction modifiers are key and anti-wear. So we add zinc, ZDDP, we call it zinc. Other people call it different things. But so that's one of the sort of the anti-wear additives we've been using for 50 plus years. So we boost it with that because it's a very nice component to use. It also has actually an antioxidant in, in some cases too. Oh wow. And then we also boost with Somali. In the synthetic specifically, we actually boost with Somali friction modifiers Ooh. to really improve the improve your power, to try to get as much out of your engine as possible, right? Uh, but it also also Molly is an anti-wear agent. It's also an antioxidant. So those components boosted up actually bring you additional performance versus say our, our normal normal package. So we call we call them boosters, right? Yeah. It also has you know, our best well, base oils. So 80% of an oil is is base oil. We call base oil mineral oil, right? Or synthetic oil. In this okay. Case, synthetic uh, is a big, and that plays a very important role in the in the performance. So you have to use the best oil to start with to kind of build on on top. Of it. As my tuning skills are getting better, my engines are actually lasting longer. And so I wanted to ask you what. What's Valvoline doing with extended life or longer protection inside of vehicles? And that's what we live for. We want to maximize the life of engines on the, on the road for our, for our consumers. And we were asked as a technology team to do that. So we have a new product called Extended Protection. It's a full synthetic oil, and it has all the bells and whistles you want in your engine to maximize the life. The things that kill an engine are heat, wear, friction deposits, right? Those four things we've been talking about. To me, heat's always the number one thing. Heat cascades into other problems. And so you want to help control heat as best as possible. In that sense, you want to control how the oil responds to heat. And so we've boosted this product so that it actually is much better in terms of, of thermal degradation. So at 10 times better than the current ILSAC GS6 specification. As an oil ages, it gets thicker and thicker, right? And it's thermally, as it thermally degrades. We want to minimize that. You want to keep the same viscosity during the entire life of your oil. Because that's where your engine's happy, right? It's not happy when the oil gets thick. So you don't want this, right? You want it, you want it to keep the same viscosity that you started with. And that's what this oil, oil does, 10 times better than, than the current specifications. It's our best oil ever. So we're very proud of it.